love sending Kim pictures because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to do. funny, mama. <laughs> so that I was like, I hit him too. Like a song. Too funny mamas. Hey everybody, welcome to Two Funny Mamas, and I am one half of the Two Funny Mamas, Sherry Shepherd. Uh, Kim is on a forced vacation by me, so filling in for her is the man that I love and dislike the most. It's David A. Arnold, <laughs> the love that got away. <laughs> Hi, David. What's up? What's up, Sherry Shepherd? How are you? <laughs> I'm, so I'm doing good. good I'm doing good and bad. <laughs> That's how I. Yeah. Let me tell you, y'all should have saw me. They should have saw me watch you try to put this whole system on, uh, on to hook it up, hardwire it. It was like nine people in Sherry's house. And well, I when they said like, when Chris when Chris said, "Where is your modem?" and I I don't know what that is. And then I said, "Yo, tower." Yo, internet tower. Then she went, oh yeah. In the it's in the black people got a name, a re, a different name for all things. Don't the official name ain't gonna get nobody's attention. It sure but won't. The, it, but I said that tower, she went, Oh yeah, I know exactly what the tower is. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm sorry. Chris go learn. Talk to right. me the right way. Right. <laughs> you know what will get Where, results, David. You know you've been hey, married so get? long. I know, cause I every everything all everything around here is that Wichima thing. You know that other thing over there. Oh, that thing. I didn't know. I thought you meant the other thing. You mean that thing? <laughs> That's right here. <laughs> this is what I want to know. I I love you so much, I do David like Arnold. Too. You know, when you were, you've been married to, how long have you and Julie been married? Uh, we've been married 18 years, four days ago. July, well, no, let me see. Today is the, five days ago. We're on the 12th five of July. Years. We've been married 18 years. And you know, the word around Hollywood is everybody, when they mention you, everybody goes, and Julie, God bless her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's an asterisk next to Julie's name, and God bless her. How she deal with this man? I don't that's, right. how, that's she, what we do. This, I know. It's true. I do understand. It's Listen, everybody has that person that is supposed to be, I guess, with them through the through their journey. And some people get lucky and get that person. I mean, we'd be going through it now. Don't, you know. But I, I don't not know, and I'm not not aware that she's the one that was supposed to definitely walk me through this because i you know I, if i was her i'd have left me a long time ago <laughs> yeah if i was her being me i'd have left you a long time ago and sued your ass for mental anguish <laughs> mental because hey, all these big all these paid bills and this pool and all this happiness over here is just mental anguish it's too much nobody should have to deal with this type of security <laughs> that you provide david so what you want a little ass every once every six to eight weeks <laughs> So what this? you expect, you expect some food that's not microwave, but the mental <laughs> anguish of having to do those things is too much. That's what I hear. <laughs> it is because you, you just put so much extra on everything, David, as I know, I know. you know, but, but I, I, I could sit and watch you for hours on end, do your stand up. The thing, the, when I started watching you and you said marriage is like a cage match, the, the, the thing comes down, let the games begin. <laughs> I was on the floor at the way you described a marriage. Yeah, that's what it's like. Cause people don't get it. And I think that other people don't, what other people don't get is that we, everybody talks about marriage and they sell it inside. It's like selling a car. They talk about all, oh, you get 80 miles per gallon. They tell you all the great stuff. But what they don't say is, now when the brakes go out, it's gonna be 1200. I just need you to know, every brake pad gonna cost you 1200. Like they don't give you none of the other side. It is like, I, I love driving BMWs. That's just, that's not a brag. That's just what I like. But I also know that they cost. Yes. So you just have to have what you like, what you like, go into what you, but knowing it's going to cost you. 
And I don't like when people just talk about the one side, the new car smell, the leather seats and all the, all the functions right at your fingertips. All of those things cost. <laughs> and sometimes it costs mental anguish. <laughs> no free lunches. Uh, Chris, I love David Arnold so much. Uh, he loves Julie, his his two daughters. I, I honestly can't wait for the sitcom of your life. Um, we working on it. I, I, I really, I can't right wait now. to see it. Um, I, I know you get you, to see it. I really do. You probably gonna cast uh, Christina Milian to play your wife because that's what y'all. That's all hilarious. Do. <laughs> you know what's so funny? This is what I can tell you this right now because you know I'm in, I am developing the show. We actually on Monday we do the table reader the first three episodes, and Lena Waithe and Kevin Hart are the executive producers of the show, and we're very they are very conscious about the type of woman that they cast opposite me, and. It's not, I can tell you, it's not, it's not going to be no shit that causes a whole bunch of conversation from the community. I can tell you that okay. right now. It ain't. All right. Because I, I just said I want it to be authentic and I want it to be real. All right. Because I just knew I was talking about it with somebody and I said, I know Riri going to walk up and be like, honey. Rihanna is David Arnold's wife. Ain't this about a player? How did that happen? In right. Her first time, that let me happen? tell you something. But let me tell you, this is what you know. And this is real talk. And Cherry, you know this. And I'm learning this from producing this Nickelodeon show that I have on right now. It ain't just you doing your career. You just got finished going through a whole development process yeah. as you went through your show. You have an idea that you have in your mind. And by the time you get that through the other end, to get it on the air to the people, the masses, 700 people's voices have touched that, that journey. So now yeah. what you started with may not even be what ends up on screen because, hey, it's, it, I mean, it, it will come down to this. Uh, yeah, we want to put your TV show on the air, but... Unless you want to use this actress, it ain't going to happen. Or that actor, it ain't going to happen. And then you do it and it ain't nothing you wanted. But Can it's I like, and then you, you get on TV and everybody cussing you out. <laughs> David, I had a show on Lifetime called Sherry. And yep, I, I wanted, and, and uh, it, it was a part where for Niecy Nash, who's my best friend, and yep. Niecy had to audition. She was so mad. She was like, I ain't never had to audition to play me. And That's crazy. she ended up not getting it. And they brought in the amazing Tammy Townsend, uh, who's now yep. on Queen Sugar, who played my yep. best friend. Then my husband, I wanted him to play, because you know my ex-husband won, ex-husband won. Yes. I wanted someone to play him who looked like him. And we, casted, a, we casted an amazing person who looked like my husband. We did the pilot. And when I tell you 10 minutes into taping the pilot, I said, where the man that playing my husband? He was gone. <laughs> the network said they wanted a name and someone more attractive. I was like, what? Wow. I, I wanted it to be, and let me tell you, and I'm not throwing shade. I, I think still at this day, my son looks like my husband. I think my son is the most attractive boy right, in the world. Right, right. But they wanted right. someone who had TV looks. So they fired him right. and I felt so bad because wow. he was so excited to book the role of playing my husband. And they brought in Malcolm Jamal Warner, who I loved. He was great. Right. And Malcolm for the entire season played my ex-husband who left me for the white girl. And it worked and it was just like, but it yes. did, it, it went through all of these. One day I was wearing hoops in my pilot the third episode, I was like, where my hoop right. earring? And they were like, um, well, you know, the network lifetime, you need to talk to the producers. And I'm an executive producer on the show. And I went and literally, this is what they said, because lifetime was not in a lot of the black households. They said, the director, mm -hmm. uh, executive producer said to me, Sherry, you have to ease your way into white households and hoop earrings suggest ethnicity. And I went, yeah, I'm black. Wow. And he my black said, face don't suggest ethnicity. 
the man playing my husband, the girl playing my best friend, the woman. And he said, Sherry, you have to, d don't shoot the messenger, but you have to earn your way into those households. And so wow. you have to be a little bit safe. And I just was, I, it, even down to hoop earrings. So you're right. Yep. I, yep. It was an amazing yep. show for the season we did it. Yep. I'm not complaining. But it, the things that I had to go to e go through, even being executive producer of a show called Sherry, you're right. 700 people take apart everything and you have yep. a vision that you start out with and I'm gonna let you take the floor. You know what? It's so funny because I'm learning that as I, <clears throat> I'm a showrunner for the show at Nickelodeon that I created. What's it's the name a fantastic of the show, show. The What's show the is called That Girl. The show is called That Girl Lele. It'll premiere September 23rd. Um, we are almost done with the first 13. And it's based on a little rapper out of Houston. She's an Instagram like sensation. She's fantastic. We um, The concept is there's another girl we got. Her name is Gabby Neve Green. She's from a TV show called All That that they rebooted on Nickelodeon. Yes. Super talented. She plays a little introverted girl who has an affirmation app that she's friends with in her cell phone that she wish came to life. And that app through a, a you know, a, a star, a wish upon a star comes out of her phone and comes to life. And that person that comes to life is that girl, Lele. And it's like these two little teenage girls going through life together and all these adventures, you know what I mean? It's the extrovert pulling the introvert out of her shell and the introvert showing the extrovert, there's ways that you can't just be all out there. You gotta learn how to be out in the world. And it's fantastic. It's Will Packer called me last year and asked me to create this show. They sent me one paragraph and I created this whole world. And we're on this journey and it's fantastic. But one of the things, and it's, I'm very excited. My daughter, Anna Grace is one of the reoccurring characters on the show. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's really dope to watch these. It's the first time that Nickelodeon has had two little black, two little girls of color, you know, two little black girls that are lead on a show and the show itself, it's all, it's, it's a lot of fun. But as I go through the creation and the production of the show, you have all of these people chiming in on what they think. You know, what we think Sadie, that's which is the, one of the characters' names, what she should be wearing and all of the, and you have all these people who it's, they're now speaking for a brand. They're speaking for the network. Now they have to find where the brand of the network meets up against what your vision for the show was. And where, and, and at the end of the day, 95% of the time, they're going to get what they want because they're cutting the check. They just try to slow talk you into agreeing with them. Oh, you like blue? Oh, we were thinking green. We, what do you think about green? I, I mean, blues, but it's crazy. It, it, I hate it. But it, <laughs> it is a necessary part of running a show. That is what you have to deal yeah, with. And, and still yes. your, your, your vision is coming through, but it, it, you yes. know, to the listeners and the viewers, it really, y'all don't understand. I did a, a pilot with Jenny McCarthy and Deborah. Oh, geez. Who was the woman on Everybody Loves Raymond? And, and um, she played his wife. I, I forget her name, but y'all know who she is. She played his wife and she had a successful sitcom after that on ABC by herself. And Deborah so it Barone. was all three of us. And what was her name, Chris? Deborah Barone. Deborah Barone. But what's her real name? That's her name. Oh, Patricia, no, her, Patricia Heaton. Sorry. Patricia Heaton. I don't know how, Patricia, to, I don't, I don't know how to use the She was Deborah internet. Barone on Everybody Loves Raymond. She yes. was Deborah, Deborah Barone on Everybody Loves Raymond. And it was a pilot with uh, Jenny McCarthy, me, and, and Patricia Heaton. We were all uh, women who had kids in this elementary school. And I was the principal. And everything was going great. And we decided to, uh, this is what I didn't know about, you, you have to go through the network with everything. We all decided they right. had a scene we were in Kmart one night and we all decided to change our hair. I had came in braids. Patricia Heaton had dyed her hair. Jenny McCarthy had her hair brown instead of blonde. When I tell you the they network ushered all three of us in a trailer and lost their flipping minds. And we didn't real, we didn't know. We thought it's our hair. We want to. Then all of a sudden we had to change their, our outfit, our wardrobe network didn't, everything has to be run by them. 
And I said, I just got my hair braided. And they were like, take it out. Mm. So. Yep. Because you're playing a character. You're not playing Sherry. I thought the character was that. I would want to say to you, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so like, this is such a, it, oh, it's wow, like, uh, I feel everybody that loves you is so excited for you and the success that is coming to you because you've been in the business how long working hard um probably 28 years 28 years and, 20, and i yeah. think when people yeah. hear this because you you see TikTok and you hear about these TikTok people who go viral and all of a sudden they're a success a lot of times they crash and burn because they haven't been right. through it and they haven't built up a a, a, yeah. a hard shell so to know that you've been in this business 28 years, you're finally, you have a sitcom on Nickelodeon that also you got to, I don't even know if I could talk about that, but a double deal with even another network. You got a merchandising deal where yeah. these two little girls are going to become dolls in the stores. Yes, they and, do. They have a huge, yeah, they have huge deals. Yeah. And so all of this is happening and you're developing your own show with Lena Waits yes. and Kevin Hart two big heavyweights about your life that we watch on video every day. It just, <laughs> it, we live vicariously through you and truly am so proud. And I, I'm so excited to see where the success of both of these shows that even if you had Rihanna as your wife, I'm still excited. <laughs> I would be excited too. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I know you the, I don't see the problem with it. Percent be excited. But let me tell you who gonna stop Rihanna yeah, from being your she, wife, a woman named Julie Arnold. That's when Julie Arnold <laughs> would be calling the network going, I need to have a Zoom so funny. You know what's so funny? I think we at that place too now where she like, listen, do whatever you gotta do. If Rihanna <laughs> wanna run off with you, then go. Go. <laughs> exactly. See if she like picking like, up your nasty just, draws. Yeah, see if she like, see how long she take you being who you are. That's the that's what we both remind each other every time we think we want to leave. We remind each other who the other person is. I say, go on out there, Julie. Go on, see if you can do that kind of uh, you know what you do in out there like you do in here. They don't they ain't having it like that in these streets. You got to come <laughs> with it. You got to put in time. If you going out in, there ain't no little three minutes, hurry up so I can go to sleep. Ain't none of that out in the streets. No, no. So you <laughs> and tell Julie I co-sign on that. You can't look at these streets today. You can't look at no man and go, uh, uh, I don't do that. I don't do that. Uh, uh, no, no. Then you need to go on back where you came from. If that's where, if that's what's happening. And tell Julie, especially no, at this we, age, I'm very you, excited. At this age, you got to have all the selling points you <laughs> you can get on this car. That you ain't. Woo. Exactly. Yeah, because now you selling a car different. Now listen, that left back window don't go up like it used to. But I can get it up. I know somebody who knows somebody. I'll still get you there. <laughs> I literally am selling my Mercedes. Yeah, that's the and to get you from A to B. I sell my Mercedes David to men now. I'm like, this is a classic right here. Now you can't ride it all over the place. <laughs> but when you want to go somewhere special this and have people Sunday go. Only. It's a Sunday only, and you can go to church. <laughs> now, the windows may roll down slow, but you look like you got swag when they roll. You may hear a couple bumps wow, under the hood. That's a great bit. You got it. Really? Okay, which I don't know. I just that's asked David. That's a great bit. You need to do that. On stage? Okay. I will do it. Thank it you, David. Very good. Yeah. Well, Chris, people don't know, and I want people to know, this is why I love, hate David Arnold, because he's so, he's so, he's, see, this is the worst time to get a David Arnold because he's rich now, because he's successful and he got heat on him, because everybody in Hollywood <laughs> knows David Arnold's name. This he is why it's he, know, he knows it too. He's cute and, and he, he knows, knows it. it. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, you always you know, want the unassuming David, person. Yeah. David Arnold reveled in the term narcissistic. He, he grins like a donkey when you call him that. And this is why it's such a bad time to know David Arnold, because you can't get help like you used to do. When David Arnold was broke and he was unhappy, he was willing to help everybody. Now you ask David Arnold, I sent a text to David Arnold yesterday <laughs> in the hope, because I need somebody to help me with my jokes and write it. So I sent a text, you know, I didn't say, David, can you help me? I sent a text and I said, David, I'm trying to get my material together. If you know somebody you can refer me to. And he was like, well, what you need to do is if you see a comic that you like, just go and find one. And I'm sitting here going, well, I really need you, Dave, because <laughs> that's what you do. 
And I said, well, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to, hoping that the name Cherry you Shepherd would resonate. You know what's so funny? <laughs> what's funny, David? What's funny? It's, I, this is what's funny. That I, she, you, everything you're saying is true. I'm, 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 I, while, I have been helping I've, with my stand-up class, which I've helped hundreds of comedians. I will always help anybody. Like, 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 let me tell you the best way for me and you to do that, for us to go and do some shows together. And while we're out working, then, or when we in the clubs together, and I'm like, yeah. Sherry, let's do this. Let's talk about it. Like, same way I've done with Kim, same exact way. But I have finally gotten to a place in it, that I can, I need to focus on me because like I'm getting ready to film this next Netflix special. I need it to be good. I need yeah. it to be, this might be it. This might be the last one. You don't never know. I could, you know, I could film it and get hit by a bus on my way home after, or after I get finished filming. You know what I mean? Like you don't never, you know, and this is the, this is the God's honest truth. I'm at that place where I feel it's not, I don't feel old, but I know that every day it has counts. to count because I've been doing this for so long, you know? And it's like, now that I have these opportunities, I'm trying to make the best of them. And my daughters are very aware now of me, which they were not before. Right. They're aware and annoyed at the fact that this dude is successful. Like people, we were out eating last night. Somebody came up to take a picture. My daughter looked at me and rolled her eyes. Like, who do you think you are? Like, <laughs> That's hilarious. You need because that though, David. You know, huh? You need that. I need them to see what success looks like when you can look like if you don't quit. I need yes. them to see what drive looks like, determination. And while I think they're not listening and paying attention because every time I talk to them, they are tick tocking, uh, I believe that some of it is sinking in. <clears throat> and I just, I'm just really focused on trying to take advantage of these little opportunities that I have. Cause it took, in my mind, I go, oh, it took 23 years to get these real swings at the bat. It could take another, tw I ain't got 23 more to wait again. Yeah, you know, in all seriousness, you are absolutely right. And I, I commend you for being able to say no, because you have to focus on what on you. This is so important what you're about to do and then you, what you're embarking on. Like when as we get older, we, we don't have a bunch of slices of the pie to give away. Right. We have less time. Right. You do have to make everything count. I say no so easy now. That's what we get on Kim about. We got to talk about our friend. Yeah. Because Kim is yes. one... She does not say no. And I get on, I got on Kim yesterday, David, because Kim likes to control everything. And so she won't say yes. no. She was, her answer yes. automatically is yes. And I told Kim, I said, you, we, we're at this age where we can't, Kim, we don't have enough to burn candles at both ends. And somehow you burn candles at the sides and candle don't even have a side to burn. But That's you do hilarious. it from the back and the front and the sides. And she said, I know, I know. And I said, you got to be now focused because every moment has to count because we don't have the time. We we can't TikTok like these, the little young ones. We don't have the energy to be TikToking right. and doing these amazing sketches that everybody on Instagram does. I don't know how you produce Not so many constantly. damn videos. You, get, you know why? Because it's my, because I'm not creating an alternate universe to create this content that I'm doing. Like it's literally in the, everything that people see on me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok is really, when you see me in there ranting about the refrigerator or about the, I was walking in there and it was about to happen anyway. So I might as well go on and turn the camera on and share, I, like I told Julie when I started doing those videos two and a half years ago, I said, I need the world to see what I'm going through in here. I shouldn't have to go through this by myself. <laughs> and it's been, and it's been working. Like I don't create, I don't create a lot of stuff that's off of my real timeline. So I don't feel like it's a lot of energy 
as it is to people who like create a whole, you know, there's people who got, they got shows, they, the you know, Tony Baker. I mean, this dude got 2 million followers, but it's, I, I was talking, know. it's a grind. It's a monster to feed that social media monster. It's, yes. it's exhausting. It is. And you're constantly under the pressure to put out new content because, you know, you have people on Instagram when you say create alternative worlds like they got to rent out spaces. They got costumes. They got a script going on. It's exhausting. Yep. What the, yep. not, the final product looks amazing, <laughs> but it is yes. a full time job. And a lot of these yeah. TikTokers and Instagram people, they don't have families to take care of and children. So right. it's a exactly. little bit hard. Exactly. I get the biggest, and I know yes. you, I get, the, I get the biggest hits on social media when it's Jeffrey and I, when I do something simple. I was so excited that he brought me breakfast and I, and I filmed it to show people how, God, my son loves me. And I said, Jeffrey, I'm so excited you brought me breakfast. And he goes on camera. It, it wasn't me. It was, uh, Minier had me, make, he made me make it. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a video gone wrong, but do you understand? <laughs> Literally, I had probably 250,000 views. I had 1,900 comments because that's what people could relate to. They're teenagers giving them shit. Yep, and that's true. And that's why if you capture that real stuff, it really resonates with people. Like really, yeah. that's I think that's one of the reasons why our stuff does so well because it's, and I'm not trying, that's another thing. I'm. I'm good being in my lane. I'm 52, I'm a father, I got two teenage daughters and I've been married for 18 years. I'm not trying to act like I'm something that I'm not. I'm struggling to stay in shape and not eat all this cake. That's what it is, okay? It ain't gonna be nothing else. I ain't, ain't, gonna, ain't gonna be no pictures with my shirt off standing on a Mercedes. Ain't none of that happening. You understand? The best you're going to get is a fitted shirt with me outside <laughs> sweeping up the porch where this dog been uh, tearing up shit. That's what it's going to be. And I think I catch and I relate to way more people yeah. being who I am than trying to be somebody else. Because everybody coming this way. <laughs> everybody going to get their chance at this little role I'm playing. If you're successful enough and lucky enough, you're going to get a chance to do this same exact thing. So go on out there and be cool and tick and talk <laughs> and do all your shit, but you coming this way. <laughs> That's right, because I ain't now, seen you dancing with your girls. They don't let you dance with them on TikTok? Yeah, I actually, I don't. I do it all the time. Ashlyn posted one the other day. I'm terrible. I'm good and terrible. <laughs> like, I remember they, you. they pick it up so quick. They I'm do. terrible. They, I don't understand. I'm, I'm, and it's always... It's a new TikTok coming out every damn day. It's a new challenge. No, no. I just got one minutes. challenge. <laughs> David, literally, I just did one challenge. And Kim's n uh, niece, Hannah, she said, Auntie Sherry, that's been over a year ago. Like, nobody's going to watch that. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, let me do that. Uh, the one where they do the red, you know, where you do one thing and all of a sudden it's red and I'm naked, silhouette. And she goes, they don't do that anymore, Auntie. So and I go, well, damn it. I don't understand. You got to do you know, it that day. By the time you see it, it's almost over. It just takes so yeah. much energy. Look, I'm going to jump to another because you know I'll be forgetting what I want to talk about. There's so much stuff I want to ask right, you. let's do it. My glam team, and I called you before. It, it, it excites me that my glam team is so in love with you. My assistant, my publicist, my makeup artist, my stylist, and my hair person. And then the camera girl for Dish. They are all, they watch your videos they say different things that you say. And so it really, I get a little pride going, well, let me call David right now and see what he wants. Um, and I'll be praying, please let this man answer the phone because they think that I got it like that with David. Um, please, and you hilarious. always, th thank you for answering my call every time I call you in the morning. So one day they were sitting there and they was like, we got to get that caffeinated stroke. I didn't know what they was talking about. I didn't, so and you say it, Explain caffeinated stroke so I can finish. This, this is story. a perfect time for y'all to play that video in the in this segment, so everybody can be in on this joke. Okay, so you have to send it Instagram. to Chris. Okay, okay, I'll send it to Chris so you can so you can play it, Chris. It's a joke that I did on Instagram, you know, like a year ago, where Julie had promised, you know, 
promised to get, we was going to get it in. And she went downstairs. She always do that. Yeah, I'm going to be up in 10 minutes. And I look up and it'd be three hours. I'm like, oh, you think I fell asleep up here, huh? Nope, I didn't, I didn't drink 12 cups of coffee. And I mean, I'm waiting on that ass because she going to get this caffeinated stroke. That's what's going on. <laughs> Ladies, don't make promises if you ain't going to keep them. My wife promised me some ass tonight, but she thinks I forgot. <laughs> no. Now she downstairs trying to outweigh me in hopes that I fall asleep. God damn. What she don't know is I've drank 12 cups of coffee. So I'm going to be waiting for that ass. And when she finally gets here, she gonna get this caffeinated stroke. Yeah, yeah. It was the most ridiculous thing that I had ever said that come out of my mouth. I was like, I can't believe I just said caffeinated stroke and it went viral. It went viral. And I told yeah. you, you needed to make a t-shirt and a dang tr a gone trucker's hat. Because everybody in my household says, you gonna get this caffeinated stroke. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> Hit us up, David. We, we'll, we'll get your merch store launched tomorrow. David ain't so gonna let us do nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing that down right now so I can tell this story on stage and make this a part of the special. You do, and your in your merchandise put your face on it. Either that's got to be a bubble out of coming out of your head, going. You gonna get this caffeinated stroke? Like your face has to be on the t-shirt and the hat. It gotta, has to. He's got to be smirking, and he's got to have a cup of he's got to have a cup of coffee in the, in the other hand. Yes, and it's it's just so funny. And so I said, well, <laughs> so this is what I wanted to ask you because my glam team, they're all women. They said, you know, David mm -hmm. is like. He's so sexy. And I was like, what? I didn't know you too long. I didn't see you without a shirt. I didn't, you know, I, me and Kim just seen you, you know? And I said, what? Sexy? What? And they were like, he's so sexy. And um, I, I wonder if the women be running after David. And I said, well, I'm going to call him and ask. And they were like, you can call David right now. And I was like, please, let me ask because my reputation is the stake. They think I know all these people. And David was like, what do you want? And I said, David, what do you want? And I said, David, do women come after you? And you said something like, well, just because you had to ask me, you know they do. <laughs> David, why do women, you have a certain level of sexiness now. I see it when I go to the clubs and I'll be watching you, what is it about you that women are attracted to now? My family, <laughs> who I am, my, the, the success, what they, what they think they see, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's, I think women, especially women of a certain age, women who are yeah. 35 and over, are attracted to things that become important to women that are 35 and over, which is a man who knows how to take care of his family, a man who, you know, does what he's supposed to, you know, like I'm a, I'm a great dad. I take care of my daughters. I make sure my wife has everything that she needs. She ain't got to ask for nothing, you know? And I think those qualities, you know, and you know, I'm, I got money. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm successful. And women, those are important qualities to women 35 and over. Women 30 and under, they like the chain, the car, the six pack, the all that. They love all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's the thing that I think it's my, it's, it's who I am and, you know, what they see me be on Instagram. Because what they see me be on Instagram is a funny, shit talking dad and father and husband and i think that's what they like and they would be right i am very sexy when it comes to <laughs> i don't know why i laugh hysterically when you say it like that it makes me laugh i've known you too daggone long what these women don't know who be trying to get at you at the clubs is they don't know you neurotic as hell they don't know you get irritated about my work, yes. David, okay, let's not, yeah. let's be real. You get mad and you did a video, if somebody, you talked about on stage, when your family member kept taking the ice out of the ice machine from your refrigerator, you get upset. Well, yeah, that's, people... dis well, that's disrespectful. 
<laughs> but who the hell does that? Who comes to somebody's house and switches up the whole ice system and then uses all the damn ice? <laughs> like, don't. This, I, this ain't the place. You visit it. <laughs> you get upset when we we were on the road one time we were all in Jacksonville Florida Kim and you because you were on tour with Kim uh it was called he say she say and you guys uh -huh. went to and I was at another comedy club so I came and saw y'all one night you guys came and saw me the other night at the other club I remember that. you get upset it well I get upset too when Kim running late you lose your oh shit. my god Oh my God, it's nothing worse. She's so slow. I never <laughs> met nobody who moves the, the slow, like there's no sense of urgency. There's no, no, that just, oh. And I deal with that every time I leave this house with my daughters and my wife now, because now I got three girls in the mirror trying to make, you know what I mean? You got to tell them two hours before we go in some place. You can't just be like, hey, I'm about to go. I'm leaving in 20 minutes. They never gonna make it. And I just wears me down. It's like, just come on. And uh, you know, yes, David, you're right. I'm a little new rock. Do you understand though? Let me explain this to you, David. Do you understand? We are trying to get in the mirror. We're trying to look the best that we can for you and for the world. And sometimes that takes a little bit longer because all you doing is washing your hair. You washing the underside of your balls between your balls and your penis, just that right. area. You put That's on right. one shirt, you sniff your shirt to make sure it smells okay, and you put your clothes on and you're ready to go. So you get irritated yep. at us, and we're just trying to make it so that you can look at uh, us and go, this is my family. Yes, so that is true. Too. That it is takes true. A there's times bit when they time. come, but here's the thing. There's times when these three come downstairs, and I'm like, all of y'all go upstairs and try again. I've worked way <laughs> too hard. <laughs> Like that is how, so you're right. You ain't lying. How you dealing with because I have a teenage son. We had our children. Uh your your oldest is Anna Grace, right? Yep, Anna Grace. Mm -hmm. I had Jeffrey at the same around the same time as Anna Grace. Julie and I were pregnant yeah. at the same yeah. time. Jeffrey yep. wants nothing to do with me. He hates pe when people say to him, Oh, you're Sherry's son. He hates it, sends him through the roof. He doesn't yeah. even want to do, he's funny as heck. He wants nothing to do with being funny. Okay, so how are your teenage daughters? How, what are you dealing with as a father? As a dad, I'm dealing with, Anna Grace is 16, she go upstairs and close that door. And, you know, and she be on the, on the, on the phone, FaceTime, and then you know, she's become really good friends with the cast from my show because they're all the same age and Ashlyn has too. And Anna Grace is just very to herself. She's a loner. She will be up there reading a book. She'll be up there watching 80s movies. And I'll, I, but I, this is what I do. I make it a point to always, first thing I do when I walk upstairs in my house, I go straight to her room and open the door. I walk right in. I'm not knocking. I'm never going to knock. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Because she's a girl. That's not true. I will yes. hit the door and then make sure she's, you know, and then I will come in and I will always come in there and sit on the bed, lay on the bed. And she'd be like, dad, I'm, 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 I'm FaceTiming. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm coming here. To, I need you to, I need you to know that I'm here, that I see you, that I love you. And I'm, and I'm seeing, I stick my face in the camera or whoever she's talking to. Cause I want her to know that I'm right here. She have an attitude. I'm getting better at understanding that her, what I call attitude is an emotional immaturity that does not have the ability to adapt to the things that she's feeling coming at her. My wife has helped me realize that we got into an argument about a month and a half ago, like one, like one of the last real, you know, and we didn't talk for three days and it was eating mm. me up. And then we finally talked. And in the middle of the argument, she started to cry and she said, dad, you hurt me so bad. Oh. And it crushed me. And I've never felt that in my life. And um, I didn't want to be that person. So I realized that it's my job to adapt so I can be who I need to be 
for her because I only got a little bit of time to make sure my daughter knows who we are and who she is and what I think about her. And so our relationship is really good. Anna Grace is very much like me, you know, mm. and Ashlyn is just, she's like the opposite, but the same. She's very strong willed. If I get into it with her, if I get in her face, she'll get right back in my face. She'd be like, you don't tell me. I know I'm, you, this is my body. I can, you don't have to, man, I'm not changing my shirt because a man, like she's all, oh, she is yeah. fire. Ashlyn is fire. She's funny. Both of them are funny. They're just two different people, but you can tell they come from the same base of me and Judy. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm at that stage where I'm open to learning from them. And I'm not trying to push what I think they should be or how they should be because it's what I think and where I was and what I was doing and how I was raised was 30 plus years ago. Right. That ain't, that ain't it. That ain't the way no more. Ain't nothing the way. Nothing 30 years ago is the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it has its challenges, but I'm open to allowing it to make me a better person and dad and man. And I'm hoping that what I'm trying to do eventually will give them the foundation to be good women, you know what I mean? And good people. So that's it's my funny. answer to my babies. It's funny because being a, a single mother with a teenage son, like yes. I, I, I had to stop busting in Jeffrey's room because I'm used to walking in his room. He put a sign yes. on the door that says, please knock and wait for me to answer because <laughs> right. he's going through something now, David, where he like, yeah. I can't walk in his room. I might see something yes. I don't want to see. That's right. Don't, don't do it. in the it. bathroom with the shower running. For, my water bill is insane <laughs> because he's in the bathroom so long with the shower running. And then he, he will tell up me- in there. He growing up, like literally growing up, like <laughs> it's growing yes. up. And um, oh boy. he he will say to me, I'm going to the bathroom. And I said, why do you tell me you're going to the bathroom? He goes, because I don't want you to disturb me. And he looked at me like that. And I was like, okay, all right. And it literally, men had to tell me, Sherry, because I said, I, I was telling the people on, on uh, Mr. Iglesias set. I said, he in the bathroom, yeah. what is he doing? And they said, uh, uh, Gabe said, just leave lotion on his dresser. Don't no. say nothing. <laughs> just leave. And I said, but then he won't know what to do with it. I'm going to take him to Whole Foods and talk to him about scented, unscented, thin. He said, don't do none of that. Just leave a bottle of lotion. Jorgens and beat it. <laughs> and then, literally and beat it and, and and my prayer for my son always to god is show me how to be the mother that he needs me to be because yeah. he's i understand he's so uh we're so combative because he's trying to find his way as a man and yep. i am like he wants to move to new york because he's like anything to get away from you nobody else you <laughs> Do you understand how much that like it hurts my feet? He don't I'm, he don't want people to know I'm his mother. He hates when people say I love your mom. Like he it drives him insane, and I have to sit and just go. He's trying to find his way. So he That's asked right. me. Nothing. He it said he has to do. Be, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Sorry. That's okay. And that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying not to take it personally because he said, please stop posting me. I don't want to be in none of your videos. And I go, but that's how I get followers. Like we like <laughs> Desi and Lucy, like Jeffrey, everybody knows about you. And if I don't, this is how I get likes, hundreds of thousands of, and people branding right. him. He's like, I don't want to be a part of it. And I have to respect that. Yeah. He didn't yeah, ask yeah. for this. Yeah. I've that's gotten it. lucky. My kids have not, my kids have not, I've gotten lucky. They they fall like they just fall right into being who they are when they see that camera come on. And they are they are amazing and they're beautiful. And oh, I want to and I know I have limit very limited time with you and I'm so thankful that you decided to say yes to because you always say no to me. You say no to me with everything else, but this one you <laughs> said yes. To. This is actually the first day that I've been home from you guys like, went to Hawaii. 
We were in Maui last week. We took a week off even, and I tried not to work, but I did, because when you got a show in production and you the showrunner, you still be working. So I did, I just did it from five in the morning until they woke up, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yes, this is the first time that uh, I've been home. And I've so you a have a lot of time. work to do. You got a lot of work to do because you're home for this first day. So I'm gonna move on. I want to talk about the relationship that you and Kim Whitley have together. Because you went out for two years, I believe, on your He Say, She Say tour. You both are from Four. Cleveland. Four mm -hmm. years y'all were out on He Say, uh -huh. She Say. And you yeah. and you dealt with Kim. You know Kim better than anybody from that perspective. Yeah. I want you to, because people always say I get on Kim. Why are you so mean to Kim? Why you don't let Kim talk? And they don't understand because Kim will put her feet in front of the camera and start picking her toenails. Like, <laughs> and so I have become the straight person because I'm as crazy too. But mm -hmm. to corral Kim, so I want you to explain your relationship with Kim Whitley, who we both love. Oh man, Kim, <clears throat> I've known Kim for a long time. I met Kim when I first came out here and I started trying to, I started trying, I started doing stand up and I was trying to get in every club that I could get in. You know, and Kim had a club a uh, night at called Whacked Out Wednesdays at the Ha Ha Cafe. And I wanted to get on that stage. I mean, it was a hot night. Eddie Murphy, anybody was a star would come in there. I just wanted to be wherever it felt like heat was at that I could be seen. And she and Buddy Lewis ran that club. And when I saw Kim, Kim immediately was like, well, what you gonna do for me? You know what I mean? And <laughs> I was like, I just I just wanna get on stage. I mean, I don't know, what, what, what are you talking about, right? <laughs> and Kim wanted, to, Kim wanted to go out. She wanted to, you know, and I agreed to go out. And then when, by the, between the five or six days that from when I agreed to when we were supposed to go out, I changed my mind. And I was like, I can't do it. I, it was, I was thinking about it every day. And I was like, if I do this, I know what's gonna happen. And then there's gonna be this space in my comedy world that I cannot, prob I'm probably not gonna be able to occupy because I've decided to, you know, uh, break Kim off and, 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 and knock her out her wig. And I didn't wanna do that. <laughs> that's what was gonna happen. And so I, I, I declined and didn't come. And of course literally, you didn't. Literally. Literally. I did not, I did not, I, I did not literally all, on all levels. I was like, I pass. Uh, oh and so we had this little, you know, oh, he, you too good to, you know, this little playful mm -hmm. thing, but I was doing stand up, and <clears throat> I was always performing and I was always around Kim. And then Kim noticed me as a comedian because of her parents. Kim, I was on stage performing one night and Kim's parents were in there. And Kim said that she saw her parents bent over laughing like she had never seen them laugh before. And she couldn't understand why, because they had seen all the big stars that she's had in there on stage. And she's like, it ain't nobody here tonight to have her laughing like that. Now, what you don't know is you are a part of that story. You me? are, yeah, because oh, let wow. me tell you why. Let me tell you what happened. It was. It was at that second club that they moved to after Ha Ha. Uh, what was that place? Sarah's? Was it Sarah's? Yes. Yeah, it was Sarah's. something like that. Yeah. That night I was getting ready to go on stage. It was probably 13, 17 people in that room. And you were going on before me and you just went through the stuff with your husband, your first husband. And, and you went on stage and went in on one of the realest sets that I had ever seen. It was so real, it was so good that it made me change my set. Cause I was about to go up and do all my, all my, you know, whatever was, whatever autopilot brought you that got laughs, you know what I mean? But you did this, this set that was so real about the man and the other woman and how you were processing it. And, and it just made me go, Oh shit, we being real today. I can't come up here with jokes about McDonald's and you know, have you ever, you know what I mean? Like, and it, so I changed and I did some of my material about coming up and my stepfather and my family and Kim's parents were in the audience and that's, they were bent over dying. Kim came, Kim came in and sat next to them and watched me. That was the moment she saw me, saw me. Mm. And we became, we started talking on a different level. And after a while, you know, 
Kim is Kim is a chameleon. Everybody can get with Kim and she can morph into a situation to where she makes everybody around her comfortable, yeah. makes you feel good. You love being around her. You know what I mean? And we were so good with our back and forth, like her and Buddy were. The difference was I started putting a plan together. I'm like you. All this stuff I see you and Kim doing, I know who doing everything. I know who's <laughs> driving all the, trust me, because I, I was that person. I put together the show and I said, we should go out and yada, yada, yada. And then she wanted to work on the stand up. And at that time I needed a name to even get me in the clubs because these clubs were not interested in me. So I came mm -hmm. up with that idea that he said, she said thing. And we put it together and we went out on the road and it's, and when I tell you, comedians are very selfish. We love being on stage by ourselves. We love all the attention. We love all the laughs. We don't need you to get laughs. But when I'm on stage with Kim, I don't feel like I'm losing anything. I feel like it's, it's a compliment to the things I do. And we never rarely rehearsed anything. We would yeah. just go up there and be, and I would go places that would make her uncomfortable, which means off script of other stories that we've told in the past. I, I would see her try to set us up to tell a story that we've told and I would ignore it and go in a completely different direction just so she would have to stay on her toes. But mm. we had a great time. I mean, I, I, would, I, I want to do it again. I'm at this place right now in my career where David has to, you know, I'm getting ready to go on tour and so I got to do what I got to do because Kim's engine was the one engine driving our boat. Like I would go to on the road with Kim and they didn't even, some people thought I was the security. We would go to do radio and they would be like, uh, I, and I wouldn't even have a mic. It was, he <laughs> said, she said, both our pictures is on the flyer. They'd be like, some places to try, like nobody acknowledged me ever until after they saw me on stage, but before mm -hmm. or whatever. And so I realized, I need to get stronger, more of a draw, bigger, more of a name so that I can bring something to this thing like Kim is doing. Because it was Kim's celebrity driving the boat. And nobody knew that I was the organization behind it. But Kim is my Kim is my sister. I love her dearly. Like, I love that girl. You know what I mean? And after so many weeks go by and I don't hear from her, I can feel it. You know, and I'm like, I need to hear from you, you know, and she's my sister. I'm proud of all the stuff she's done. I love her heart. We got into it a few, a couple of months ago, because I didn't do a show that she wanted me to do. I know. She's so and mad I, at you. She's so mad at me and so angry. And when I sat back after I talked to her, because she came and did my show, and we sat in her dressing room and talked, <clears throat> and I didn't think about it from her position. And when I thought about it from her position, I went, okay, I was wrong. And I apologize. She and then she called me, and she called me to do another show. And I said, absolutely. And my and my agents were like, but she, I said, I don't care. Say yes, make the deal so I can come and do the show. You know what I mean? And you're, and, and, and I've learned a lot from her. I've learned so much from her and you don't get a lot of friends in this business. You do not. You get a lot of associates. You get a lot of people to stand on the red carpet and we can both pretend that we're important together. Like we get all of that. That's, that's a dime a dozen. But like people who I feel like would be my, I think about like who would be my friend if I decided to go back and be a nurse again. And I never was a stand up ever again. She felt, I feel like Kim would be one of the people that would still come over and say, what you doing? I would be your friend if you decided to be a nurse again, because I know then that we could be in a relationship and you would take all my money. That is true. That's 100% yeah. true. I yeah, would 100%. I'd be like, he need me. He need me. I, he need me. <laughs> exactly. I, you ain't lying. <laughs> if I go I, back to I, being a nurse. <laughs> so, I, I, I just want to ask you two more things because you're so it's amazing, fine. David. But I, 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 I so appreciate you, you coming on. Um, the one thing was, um, um, 
I did, and we love Kim, and that's what, and and there's such that's such an an amazing story about Kim because people don't get to see that side of Kim. They see the crazy side of Kim, but Kim mm. is literally Kim is a friend to the end. I'm gonna tell you a very quick story about how how I had to. It was when Ricky Harris died. Remember? Oh and yeah, I remember that. And I had gone to his funeral and it was a fight and it broke out about Snoop Dogg and I periscoped it because I got scared and it was just a mess because people thought that I had sold the footage to TMZ. I had to explain to the family that, you know, TMZ follows celebrities. So I'd never sold anything, but I went to a comedy club where it was a big fundraiser for Ricky Harris and the, the, the tension was palpable because so many folks thought that I had sold footage. It was just horrible. So I was on stage doing stand up. Nobody was laughing and I was determined to stand my ground. And a man right. confronted me on the stage, like literally confronted me on the stage. It was terrible. The MC came out, went off, got him seated. And I was so upset. And I stood at the edge of the stage and I said, Sherry, you can't cry. You, you can't cry. And all I saw was this woman with blonde hair. You know, Kim used to wear that platinum blonde hair. She came from the back of the club to the front and she stood at the edge of that stage and she said, I'm scared as shit, but I'm not leaving you. And I looked at her and she made me laugh and she said, I'm not going to leave you here. And I don't want to be here. And Kim stood there in defiance and I'm going, what Kim, you got a bad back. <laughs> you got to sit. What are you going to do? Like, but in that moment, I said, that's my friend yep. who has my back no matter what with that platinum blog winner. And she stood there ready to take on that entire club of people who yep. I was bombing in front of. And I will always appreciate her friendship, which is why we care so much and we be getting on her to slow down. And I yes. mean, she was mad at me because she said, you, she said, you're doing a show with David Arnold on our podcast. <laughs> and I said, yeah, we're doing it tomorrow morning, Kim, and she was silent. She said, are you doing it from my house? And I said, no, because I want you to rest. And she went, I could do the podcast. And I wouldn't let her. <laughs> I said, no, you already had David to yourself. It's my turn. You are not allowed. And I said, and I said this morning, I swear to God, if Chris let that girl break in, everybody getting fired. Because that's what I knew was going to happen. I said, Kim going to break in this damn podcast. She watching right now. She watching this right now. Hello, Kim. I need you to know that I'm always right here. You understand? <laughs> we love her. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch gears. Um, I was telling you earlier. I was at a comedy club yesterday. I had a heckler who had been taught, and it wasn't a heckler where they was making fun of me. They were one of those ones. They wanted attention. They came and sat right mm. in the front and they talked. Through mm -hmm. the through uh, Max Max uh, Imani, I think his name was, had gone up killed, mm -hmm. but he had yep. to deal with them talking. They would not stop. So when I got on stage, I tried to make them feel at home. I tried to do it jovially. I tried to forcefully. And then as I was doing my punchline, the man screamed out, and he farted. David A. Arnold. Something snapped inside of me, and I lost it. I bent down on my knees. That man's head was right between my legs. And I bent down, looked him in his face, and I said, shut the fuck up. I cursed him out so bad. He will never heckle another black woman. I can't speak for nobody else. But black women, this black woman scared him so bad. He ended up kissing my hand. But it, I was so upset that I had to go there dealing with this heckler and get in his face like that. Have you ever had any, any stories what do you do with hecklers? Um, the answer is first, let me acknowledge what you said. Good for you. You need to do that. We all need to do that. And if you do this long enough, everybody's going to have to do that. And it reminded me of times that I've had them. So let, let me, let me, let me tell you. Yes, I have had hecklers. Um, what do I do with hecklers? It depends on the kind of heckler they are. You have the heckler that thinks that they're helping by adding and commenting and co-signing on everything you say. Then you have the one who will really literally talk back and try to like argue with me. Especially when you have a point of view, when you're expressing yes. what you think about and they try to, you know. And you know, 
and then you have the person who you know yeah that 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 thinks they can challenge you yeah um just that i have lit fire into people i have been there was there was one time I was performing. Okay, I'll tell you a couple real quick, and they're gonna be. I'm a really when I say quick, they're gonna be quick. There was one time I was preparing for my very first stand-up special that I did in 2000, called "I've Never Heard No," called because I got to go to work in the morning, mm-hmm. and I was at the Belly Room in the Comedy Store performing, working on my material, and it might have been 30 people in there, and I was trying to do this joke about my stepfather, and it was just it was choppy. It wasn't there yet. And in the silence, you hear this guy out of the back go, ha that nigga's struggling. Oh, right? And it wasn't even like a heckle. It was like I was made fun of and the room laughed. And I was standing at a fork in the road and I was like, I can deal with this two ways. I can like attack this dude or I can acknowledge this dude in a different way. And I chose to acknowledge him in a different way and say, and what I said was, you know what? I am struggling because I have the discipline to work out material until I get it to where it's going to be. What you're watching is a comedian who has discipline to approach their craft. So I'm gonna continue to be here and you trying to make fun of what I'm doing is not gonna deter me. You know what I mean? The room gave me a huge round of applause and every joke after that murdered. Wow. That was one way where you you come above them. Then that was the night I was getting ready to do uh, I was getting ready to film something for Comedy Central in New York the next day. And I was at the Comedy Union performing. There had been girls, like a table of girls in the back. Obviously, they were there for some girls night out, yada, yada, yada. They were talking the whole night. They mm-hmm. weren't heckling anybody. They were just disruptive amongst themselves. Yes. I had watched them do this through two comics. I went on stage to do my act because I was going to film it in New York the next day. And if it went well, there were some other things coming from me from this taping. I go up to do my act. They're talking. I try to do what you do. Be nice. Hey, come on, y'all. Let me yada yada. And they kept going, kept talking. Kept... And I snapped. And I cussed these bitches out. Like, <laughs> I fucking, like, I lost it so bad. I cussed the ends out. I cussed the security <laughs> out. Ends is the owner of the club. I cussed because I was like, I come in here to work. You seen these bitches been fucking talking for the last hour. I said, I came in here to get something done. I want you to get them the fuck. I lost it. When I came to the audience, yes, was at me, the audience was looking at me like this. Like I lost it. And then I had to find a, And what I did is I explained to the audience what was going on, what I had at stake, and why I reacted that way. And then I slowly started doing material and turning it back into material and they didn't even know that I was doing that. And I ended up with a good set. So I've dealt with so many, I've dealt with so many hecklers. I've, you know, and now I have an energy on stage that is so aggressive that it does not really allow room for heckling. Like, I I think now I come off as like, don't, please. Like now when people do that, don't, I'm like, come on, man. Don't, don't let this light skin and good curly hair fool you. I (laughs) please, (laughs) I got an anger problem deep down inside. I I, I, like this ain't, don't unleash that person. Like, (laughs) you know, so I've been through it. It's funny because see, I don't have that aggressive personality. I have such a nice, calm personality yes. so when this man kept doing it and i kept trying to quiet him and his girlfriend down and when yes. i was you know and and, and maximani who's a big comic um he said yes. the audience wants material sherry because he had to do crowd work because this man messed him up so bad and so when i snapped i literally was pictured he was like a, jeffrey i had i got in his face and i said do you understand me do you and i made him acknowledge and then i went back to my set and said anyway so i was reading the bible and right. got a big laugh because right. i knew that the crowd it, they applauded me for going off on him but the uh, the i don't think they were prepared for the anger because you never see that from sherry so right. I had to, you do think in your head, how do I get this crowd back? Cause I don't want, cause they were looking at me like, oh my gosh, like what is she going to do? So 
I'm glad to hear that you snapped on somebody because I don't feel so bad that no, you got to because people don't get it. People don't get like people don't get that what we're doing while it's fun and it's meant to be fun for you. You don't understand that we work on this constantly. And sometimes there are, we have benchmarks that we need to hit. And sometimes you're in the way and it's like, shut up. It's, this is not a, a conversation. This is me explaining things to you and you get to laugh at what I think about these things. That's all this is drink and eat and shut up. Like that's really the answer. You know what I mean? And people don't get that. And you know, sometimes people got to be cuz I had a dude try to walk up on stage in Richmond, Virginia. He was drunk. Oh he tried to walk up on stage like he was going and when I tell you I ka, I hit this motherfucker in the middle of his chest <laughs> and sent him flying onto the table to the left. I had to buy all them people they drinks cuz he landed on the table. The food and everything went everywhere. And, and Sherry, I was so angry because I'm on stage working. He was drunk and he was fine, but then he did, he was walking back and he was one of them drunks that he just got the attention. He was sitting right in the front. And I looked at them, I was like, you, you all right? And people started laughing. Now they laughing at him. He don't like oh, it. Man. You know, he's standing up. I said, dude, come on, man, just relax. Just, it's going to be fine. He comes around and said, don't come up on this stage. And he took his first step on that stage and I popped him <laughs> clean in his sternum and sent his ass six feet back. And you know why? Because I'm angry that it's taken me this long to yes. even get people to know that I've been doing this stand up, and I'm better than most of the people you will flock to go see right now. That's mm -hmm. why I'm angry. And that's why if you keep tapping at this, you're going to get to that guy that feels like I shouldn't have had to go through all this because I've seen people go way further with less. Yes, that's this is the, something we that's talk about. It. It's yeah, funny with so. comics because we talk about this whole thing of, you know, and so many, uh, you know, people bring in video cameras, which I can't take. I don't know how you feel about video cameras. I was talking to B flat the other day and she doesn't mind if you have a video camera. Cause she's like, I'm wait a minute, wait a minute, not a video camera. What? Who, no, who, not a, a video. The... I'm sorry. Cell phone. Cell phone. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. You know how old the, I am. <laughs> you... <laughs> they got a boom and shit. They had, yeah, they had yeah. Jerry show yeah. with a boom. Hold it. <laughs> I just told my age cut, in that cut. one word. <laughs> she said video Chris? camera. Cell phones. Yes. yes. Cell phones. And we, I had a discussion with B-flat because she did not mind cell phones. I don't like cell phones because I feel as a comic, sometimes jokes are in their incubation stage. They have got to, like you said, we're trying yep. to work it out. It may be choppy. What you see six months ago when I did that joke is going to look very different eight months later. And I don't yep. need you putting it out on a YouTube thing on this is what Sherry did. And so people yep. have different feelings about that. And um, we, we talk about that because I said, oh, God, if this dog on video gets out, I'm not apologizing because I came to the lab, the comedy club to work on material and to have to beg yes. somebody, let me just make you laugh. Just sit back yes. and enjoy. And um, I said, oh, Jesus, somebody has this on a camera phone. But how do you feel about people having cell phones and taping you on stage? I'm just getting to the point where I'm starting to think about it because of, because I have things going on. Like I'm getting ready to take my second Netflix special in January. And right now I did a, there is a, there's a video out right now on YouTube that was done at chocolate Sundays, which has like broached, I think close to 4 million views, which is one of my jokes about my deaf sister having sex. Right. That and one it, is, oh my gosh. And it's killing, but that's going to probably be the closer of my Netflix special. But here's the thing. This is how I feel. Okay. It's a double edged sword. I understand why you wouldn't. I remember feeling, I don't care if you record me shit. The worst thing that can happen is it go viral and a couple of people know me. Now I want, now is the first time I'm starting to think, oh, every time I see that video pop up because it's so, it's got such a massive viewing. When I'm out performing, 
I'm thinking in my mind, I wonder if they've already seen this because it's out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like that's, so I've never had that before. When I was at the comedy store two nights ago, I performed. And then when Dave Chappelle came up, they immediately said, don't, if anybody, you touch your phone. We, because this, when you get to a place that your stand up really starts to become worth money right. in another place, then you will become more covetant of people recording you. I'm at that place where those little thoughts are just starting to pop in my head. I'm still not full foot. I don't mind somebody, I don't, but like if you go, you get in a set, then I'm gonna say something. Like if you get a snippet of me, I'm not tripping, but a set is like, dude, come on, let me, let me get the shit ready. You know what I mean? It's like pulling, like you said, it's like pulling a pie out of the oven and eating it before it's cooked all the way through. And then you go, this ain't that good. Well, bitch, it ain't finished. And That's why it ain't good. You know what I mean? So I, and, and like you're right, the Laugh Factory, their website, they have a lot of material up there of me. And 90% of it are jokes, one that I don't do anymore, but all of them were in their infantile stages. So, mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that joke ain't even, it's like they, I feel like they got that joke. That, that was the first day I did that joke. You know what I mean? But it's a thing that we, it's a thing that we deal with being comedians. But me personally, I'm just happy that people are now like buying tickets. Sherry, people are buying tickets to come see me. My shows in New York are almost sold out. Like oh, all that. Like, wow. I've never seen that before. I've never like people. I've been doing this for twenty three years. Twenty, yeah, stand up twenty, yeah, twenty three, twenty. Wait, no, twenty. I don't know. Dang it, I don't know. I've it's been doing it a long, long time. Over yes, and I've never been in that place where like my agents called me and were like, "Man, your tickets are moving like they're and we're six. You know, some of these shows are, you know, seven months out." But it's such an amazing feeling because they're coming to see you. So no matter, this is what I tell Kim all the time when she gets nervous, when she goes to headline and she gets nervous and I go, Kim, it doesn't matter who you could have Dave Chappelle feature for you. Yeah. They're going to love Dave Chappelle, but they came to see you. So no matter what, they're going to be like, Dave Chappelle was amazing. But when is Kim coming up? Cause they want to see your point of view once you hit up, hit that stage and the fact that you were selling out, they're coming to see I you. I can't believe it. See anybody. I What's can't, it, like? it, 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 it's, it's, it, I told my wife this, I remember when the executives and my agents called me to let me know that my Nickelodeon show that I created was going to series. It was official. And I was like, Oh, okay, great. Right. Very excited. Good for the journey. My second thought was, damn, I got to write all these scripts, but then when my agents called to lay out my tour and gate and rattled off these 20 cities, like at once, do you go in here? This is what we got. I've never, the two feelings didn't even compare. And I was aware of the fact that they weren't even in the same stratosphere of satisfaction and happiness, which was a trip to me. Like it just a testimony to my roots of who I am. I'm a comedian. You know what I mean? I'm blessed and grateful that I can write and do this other stuff. But at the core of who I am, I'm a stand up. No, that's and I'm incredible. blessed and so excited to go on tour. You absolutely are. I think I'm we sorry, lost. What happened? I think we lost Sherry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, you hear me fine. Yeah, Sherry, it looked like she was, you, you were speaking so eloquently and she just froze <laughs> in this position. That's it looked like hilarious. she was just so intently listening to you. So we'll, I get, know. we'll get her. No, that's great, man. For those shows, okay. that's incredible. Um, for St. Louis, I don't know if it's just St. Yeah. Louis or what, man. Our ticket sales, no matter if it's comedy or music or what, like people don't buy tickets until like the week of. It's so frustrating. And, but that's but that's another thing too, though. And that's another thing that's happening. Like we know that. So the fact that we our sales are where they are now, and I'm, you know, some five months away to be where they are it's now. Incredible. I know that my audience is a big walk up audience too. Black yeah. people don't be buying tickets five months but in advance. Trying to explain that to your people, which is why I'm so glad of 
people, you know, because I had a manager that I had to fire because I said, if you send me one more email telling me that I haven't sold tickets, they come up really that night to get the tickets. Yeah. So yeah. it is black people just, they're not going to buy them a, a month out. But the fact that they're yes. buying your tickets seven months out, be, you have created yes. an urgency. It's huge. That's what, when you right. create an urgency that people know I got to get this ticket now because I may not be able to right. get a ticket. Right. That is amazing. It's, it's, it, it's amazing. I like, I'm so, I don't know if you, I don't know if you heard me and I'll repeat it just in case you didn't. And I was saying that about my agents when they called to tell me that my Nickelodeon show was going to series. And I was like, oh, okay, great. I'm excited. Thanks. You know, but when they called and told me that my dates and they rattled off my tour, the difference in the feeling of excitement, I immediately made note of, you know what I mean? Like one thing I'm going to make a, my TV show so much more money. Like it's yeah. not even, but the standup brought me so, brought me 25 times the joy. Cause finally I get a chance to go out on the road. I don't need anybody to go with me to be a draw. I don't need uh, any gimmick. I don't need anything. I just, it just like people wanted to come. And I have not been out since my my last Netflix special aired because we were all locked down. My Netflix special came out and everybody was at home for 16 months. It came out a week before the pandemic, which was a good and bad thing. Good because everybody was home and watched it, but a trip because now that I'm going out is the first time I'm starting to see people know who I am. And I'm like, why, why are they clapping so long when I come up here? And now <laughs> right. like, that special is out and it's a little bit different. So it feel I'm feeling something that I've never felt before, which is good to feel 25 years into doing something. I want to, it's two more things. I'm, I'm going to finish this one up. How does it, Kim fine, always says, and oh, okay. Cause I know you got Julie and the kids and I want to be conscious. You're, you're coming off a hot three hours with B flat. So people yeah, love I know it. I did three hours with B flat. I <laughs> love comedy. This is how much I love Ooh, comedy. And I love, that's great. I love, and, 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 and Kim says this, and I love her so much. Kim says, Sherry, I do stand up. Sherry's a comic. Like, can you explain to people? Because I always say to you, there was before the quarantine hit, literally I went out three or four times um a week and I would hit four comedy clubs. And because I always yep. said I was better than you, which I'm gonna take that, I'm yep. gonna walk that back now. <laughs> Cause you would get off stage and be like, I just I'm going to the comedy store right now, Sherry. And I go, I didn't already hit two. I didn't did the comedy store and the improv. This is my third one, and I'm gonna be at the comedy union. I'll see you there. So I was doing 12 stages a week, and then I do four in the weekend. Can you explain yeah. what it is, why we cannot stay off that stage, no matter what? That you get more joy knowing your tour has sold out, even though you're making a gazillion times more creating this show. Yes, it's, I, this is the thing. It's that you can't give it to somebody. You can't want it for them. You either have it or you don't. It's like being an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Some two, you could have two kids. One can drink and be like, I don't like that. And one can drink and be like, I gotta have it for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? And drink it till it destroys them. I, you can't explain that gene that's in you. It, it's just a comedian, a real comedian has a desire to be a comedian, to be on stage. And things that distract from that are in the way no matter how much money they may bring doing a TV. Like this is one of the reasons why I love Jerry Seinfeld. He is a comedian. As much money as he could make doing other things, he loves the standup. I love the standup. If I could make, when I get to the place that I'm making the same amount of money doing standup that I am producing TV, I will probably never produce another TV show. Because wow. I don't want your notes. I don't want your notes. I don't want your thoughts. I don't want your ideas because I think all of them are terrible. That's how I feel. But as a comedian, <laughs> I can, I don't have to pretend I can be who I am. 
this is one of the things that I noticed about Dave Chappelle on stage the other night, going into some of the darkest tunnels, going into some of the most rawest of places, some of the most in politically incorrect things. But you know what Dave has? He has a freedom that nobody else has as big as he is. He doesn't have, he's not a slave to a sponsor. He's not a slave to a network. And so this guy, you're looking at a guy who is completely untethered by all of the things that most celebrity superstars become tethered by, which is brands and sponsorships. And like Kevin, Kevin is my boy, loving her death. We do, but Kevin has so many things tethered to him. He can't go out there and do and say, but so much without it coming back to pop him. So for me, I just, lo I love stand up so much because I love just sharing my point of view about things. I love telling my stories. I'm a storyteller. And I just love knowing that these things that float around inside my head all day are, I'm one, I'm not the only one who thinks that way and I'm not the only one who thinks it's funny. And I just gotta share. It's that audience connection that I gotta have. And I cannot explain, like when I see you and I said it to you when we were, we saw each other at a club, it wasn't even a club. It was, like, it was like a real club, not a comedy club out there in the Inland Empire. And you and, and when you and Kim walked in, my heart was full because I knew that y'all came to see me and y'all comedians. And when they started the show, I saw Sherry standing there and I knew she wanted to go on. I knew you wanted to go on stage because I know what that feels like. And that's why I told her, boy, I was like, you need to put Sherry on that stage. You need to, because like, we had a, we, we, we ain't got nothing and else the, to do. And the microphone went out. I've never forget, me and Kim was standing on the stage together. Yes. Next thing I know, she's sitting in the audience talking to people. The microphone went off. Kim just left. <laughs> and, and Sherry stayed right up there and did her thing. And that's what I respect about you. That's the kind of stuff I respect about like DL comedians. You can't give it to nobody. It's in you or it ain't. And when you fail, when you take it in the face, what you're going to do if you're the type of comedian that takes chances, that you're not staying in a safe zone, you gotta be okay knowing that this probably ain't gonna be good for none of us, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, and once you do that and you get used to being in that space, that don't bother you no more, but that feeling of not connecting, not killing, it doesn't make you not wanna go up there again. It makes you wanna go up again sooner. Yeah. That's the difference. Like, and a lot of people don't realize that. So like, you either have it or you don't, man. I cannot tell you how I, my show wraps August 11th. My first show is in Boston, August 19th. And I go wow. all the way through to Jan January 29th till I film at the Hannah Theater in Cleveland. And I cannot explain to you the level of excitement that I have about doing this. I'm excited too because uh, Fat Ballerina was so daggone good. And the fact that you're doing another special. Oh, thank you. This is, yes. now the second special is called what? It ain't for the week. It ain't for the week. And it's going to be on Netflix, yeah. right? Congratulations yeah. on all of that. It will be I'm on Netflix. Gonna... Yeah. It's... No, keep going. It's it's uh, exact... no, it's executive produced by Lena Waith and Kevin Hart. Um, I have a, a, a dynamic black female director named Malachi who's directing it, which if I'm not mistaken, is the first black woman to direct a major net, a major network Netflix special. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that. Um, and I'm just, I'm, 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 if you guys want to know, you can go to my website, davidarnold.com to get tickets. You can, my Instagram has been up here all night. You can go there and you can get all the information, but like, I'm so excited about coming out to these cities. I'm so excited about seeing everybody and preparing. 
So now I want to I want to bring it back. I know people are always complaining. Sherry, why you keep talking about men? Why you keep talking about men? But David, I talk to you about men all the time because I've been to therapy. I've been working on myself for the last three and a half years. I've been celibate for three and a half years. I, can I count the pandemic as part of my oh, celibacy? God. That was an unwilling I'm so celibacy. Sick of this. If you don't come back in here and talk to me. <laughs> I ask you about advice all the time. And look here. What is going on? Somebody told me I was combative. And so I'm trying to tap into <laughs> yeah, my femininity. <laughs> no, you can't see that because I'm not combative, David. I'm, I'm combative with you. But. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> I know you. I'm really trying. I'm, tra I'm tapping into my femininity here. I've been going out on multiple dates, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, the journey of dating different people and not being connected, uh, you know, to one person. It's just been fun. Mm -hmm. But really, what do you think, what advice do you need to give me? What do I need to be doing? Stop looking for a husband. I'm not looking, you know I don't want to get married. I'm not looking for a husband. Then, then don't, stop looking, like, whatever you, st I feel like, do you know what it's like? It's like the couple that's trying to get pregnant. And they got yeah. a schedule and a board and a chart and they, we got to do it right now. You hurry up and get home from lunch, from work. And the moment they stop, next thing you know, they got eight babies everywhere. They miserable and can't believe they asked for this shit. Like, I feel I... like you just gotta be happy. And I'm not saying that you're not happy, but you got to be cool or happy with whatever, wherever it is, what it's going to be. And maybe, maybe you not, maybe you, maybe this is what it's supposed to be. Maybe you don't, maybe you're in a period where you're supposed to date and have fun and just live. You got a son right now. And maybe the guy that's coming is coming when your son leave. Cause God know you always talk about God. God know that he need all your attention and you need all his attention. And then when he that's leave, right. cause he already done told you he going to New York. So he don't want to be nowhere near you. When he leave to go to New York, you going to drop him off on pop at the airport and you're going to be leaving the airport in tears. You're going to be leaving the airport in tears. There's going to be another nigga standing there waving in tears to his daughter by too. And y'all going to be like, oh, you just left your kid me too. And then y'all going to go down to the coffee company over there on Sepulveda and eat. And the next thing you know, y'all going to be together forever. That's how it's going to happen. Like literally, it always play out the way it's supposed to play out. And it's, I, I think, but actually, Jerry, you're a strong woman. You like Kim. And this is another thing. It's you got a, you got a bunch of things. You you successful, you got money, and you not twenty two, which right. means you have an opinion, which means you have a way of doing things, which means you have proven to yourself that there are certain things you don't need from no man. So, and the kind of man that I feel like you would need, I say this to Kim too. Now eventually would be the kind of man that you don't want. That wouldn't keep your attention because really? men come with opinions. They want to do shit the way they want me. I want you to do this certain way. This is, I'm like, I am Julia's like she is. We work together and me and you was together. I'm like, we're not, we're not doing none of that. You know what I mean? Like that, like, I'm like, like you, you just named it. You, when you started rattling off your team, the hair and the, this and the, that, and all I saw was five bitches everywhere talking. <laughs> I couldn't take that shit in my house. <laughs> I was like, I mean, like, you, you, you gotta go do this shit somewhere else. I can't take this. Like, like I some like you don't know what kind of person it takes to have to deal with you it takes a different kind of man to have to deal with a woman who really is got her own thing. And most men are not secure enough to be with a woman like that. So they try to validate themselves or she tries to validate him by going, oh, he my manager. Cause she trying to make that nigga feel better. That nigga ain't your manager. That nigga was a uh, draftsman at an engineering company when you met him. Why you got him I, talking to CBS? I, <laughs> this just came to me and I want to tell y'all listeners. Cause I, I asked David advice about men. So there was somebody that I had met, met 
and we had gone out on a couple oh. dates and I, I called David and I said, I met this guy and um, he was a, he was a manager of somebody very famous. And Dave was like, who is he? And I said the name, he didn't, David didn't know the name. And I said, but he's not, he's not managing a famous people anymore. He's a producer. He produces movies. And I'm just, I was like, you know, I think this could be it, David. And David was like, what movies does he produce? And I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't ask him all of that. And he's like, well, ask him. Okay, so I texted the guy, he didn't text me back. So David goes, well, check his IMDb, because IMDb is the international movie database. And you can put in David Arnold's name and all of his credits will come up. You put in my name, all my credits come up. So he said, well, check IMDb. Now then I got scared, because I was like, I can't go back to David. I checked the IMDb and there was nothing there. Not a thing. And then I was just like, now what I'm going to say to David? Damn it. Damn it. When I didn't hear from you, I knew what his IMDb said. Because <laughs> if his IMDb was legit, she'd have screenshot that shit and texted to me immediately. And when I didn't hear from you, I, I made note of that too. Two days later, I went, I ain't heard nothing from this thread. This whole text thread went south. <laughs> I did. I was like, I was like, my friend said uh, to ask you, uh, what movies have you produced? Are you just now into producing? And and he didn't text me back. And I was like, damn it, man, I gotta tuck my tail between my legs. Uh. That's what it is out here. Everybody, and you know what it is too. Everybody want to be someplace that they not. Yeah. Because you can want to produce. You can be like, hey, yeah, I've been managing so and so, but now I'm trying to do my own producing thing. I want to get into that. Which, to be honest with you, is not a huge jump when you've been next to somebody, if you have that personality and that type of work ethic. But for the most part, I I think you just, Sherry, you, you beautiful, you successful. I think you just, I think the person that's coming for you is, and you know what, I think the person that's coming for you is they got their own journey. They got to be like, why? I, you know, why I like Julie because Julie was busy. When I asked her to go out and said, when you want to hang out again? She said, oh, OK, let me see. And then she pitched two weeks from now. I went, two weeks? What? Why you got to? Who says two weeks? Like, we had a good time. Like, you expecting, oh, tomorrow I could. She said two weeks because I didn't know that Julie was touring with the Radio City Rockets and Jimmy Buffett. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know what she did. So I didn't know she was, but I knew that she had something to do, something. which means that all of her happiness was not going to be dependent upon me, you know? And that's true. And so I feel like when you, the dude you find gonna be busy, Bu I need you to be busy. Because first of all, this pandemic should have taught us one thing. We ain't supposed to be up in here all day together. We supposed to be together six hours a day. That's it. No, that's 12 it. and sleep eight of them. So that's four. <laughs> four awake hours, eight sleep hours, and that's it. The rest we need to be out there in the world, in society. Like, we ain't supposed to be up in here like that. So you need somebody I... busy, because if he's not, he's going to be sitting there all day looking at you. What we about to do? <laughs> which, which, Where we going to breakfast? Today? Where you want to go to breakfast? Where we going to yeah, I can't. I gotta study my lines. I gotta. I gotta go to a production meeting. Man, that's all you do. I mean, I, nigga, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> Who's texting but I us? Just want, <laughs> I I want to say my defense, us? David and Chris. I want to say my defense because here's the thing. Like when you said, every moment counts at a certain point. And I have, yeah. and it's not like I'm look looking, but it's like I'm just oh, I'm putting it out there. So that people know, because a lot of people feel like sometimes at this age, people feel like, oh, they're content. They want, you know, they want to be single. They want. So all I do is put it out there. I don't bug yes. people. I just go, David, I'm single. I'm open. If you know somebody that you knowing who I am and if you because you're yes. a showrunner now. David, you are a showrunner. You meet other showrunners. And sometimes yes. they're single. And, and now that you know, if you don't say it, people don't know. So it's not like I'm thirsty and trying. It's just like I put it out there for you. You do with it what you want. So it's like enough people know. I'm not running after anybody. I'm just going, I'm I'm single and I'm open. And they're and like B flat, I told her in Martha's Venture. 
Barack Obama is going to be there. And for me, I'm like, I always take risks. So Barack Obama is going to be there. What the heck is wrong with me going up to Barack Obama going, Barack, you know me. You know me. You and your wife knows me. If you know any world leaders, my personality that you think would fit with the Pakistani and prime world minister. Leaders. Look it up. <laughs> Who else can say that? Now, you tell me don't take advantage of that opportunity. And I know the listeners and everybody you that got on me last week. What? I would talk to Michelle. Barack ain't going to remember. I would tell Michelle. Barack ain't going to remember nothing. Michelle, Men don't remember. remember. Exactly. We can't. But that's Michelle, what I'm saying. No. Everybody, was like, everybody was like, you too thirsty. Why? Don't go to Barack. No. Otherwise, Michelle, she she will hook it up. Because when she's in another country with Prince Harry, or they, they, they might have a cousin. I could be the other black person of color over in the daggone right. castle. I will and say I when I saw that flyer pop up, I was like, they going to Martha. I don't know. I, got, I ain't on none of these shows. I'm like, that's the I'm stuff to be making you mad. Oh, they you're not going to me. perform? No, Kim is going. Kim is going to perform. Yeah, I didn't I get saw her, I saw her picture on there. I was like, this is ridiculous. I need to work harder. <laughs> I want to go. This too many go dog on, It's too many dog on, uh men of, of, of a certain standard mean. A, that means that I need to be amongst, you know, because if you're not, look here, let me tell you something, David. If you just sitting here watching Netflix and Handmaid's Tale, you're not gonna meet nobody. So if you're out there, nope. Martha's okay. If you're at Martha's Vineyard and you're sick, you never know what will happen. So that's all I'm you're saying. Right. You, you got to take a chance. You got to take a chance. I agree. That's it. And I and I try not to be combative. You make me combative. But normally I'm very vulnerable. I'm very nice. I'm very feminine. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't 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 blame it on me. Don't. Yes, I do blame it on you, and I blame it on Chris because Chris, my whole modem, everything is messed up. I'm on his Wi-Fi, keep freezing, and Chris gonna say to me, he's like, "Do you want us to help you work it out?" And what I wanted to say was, "Yeah, I want you to help me." What do you think I'm sitting here for? I'm freezing all over the place. I'm paying you, but you know what I said? I went, <laughs> "Yes, I would like that, Chris." That's that's exactly how that went. It was very, it was very accurate. I saw it. Yeah. So you and Chris, you bring out the combative side of me, and I'm really trying to stay in the feminine goddess energy. Hmm. But somehow with you, David, <laughs> See, but, I don't know. But the right dude is going to be able to deal with all that combativeness because it's going to come out. That's another thing. You ain't gonna you gonna slip back into this. Yeah. So see you yeah. see you gotta get the right guy. He need to see the combativeness because you can't <laughs> sell nobody on the sweet side because that's the bullshit. That ain't it. The combative sherry is who coming. So I need you to see all sides of this mm -hmm. so you know what's coming. Now if you still want to be here after this combativeness come out, then we got a good shot. Why you sound like I'm a whore? Got to show it to him. At some point. Oh, he's just saying that. You, you oh, need it's a, coming out. Oh, you need a gardener with gloves that can handle the thorns from the rose. That's all he's saying. You know, somehow That's I'm right. gonna say thank you to That's that. Right. I'm gonna say thank you to that, but I don't like what you just said, Chris. But I said you're a rose. You. You're a beautiful rose. I heard thorns in there. Every That's what rose I did has like. a thorn. David Arnold, no. I just want to say to you. That now it's time to say goodbye. How long have we been talking, Chris? Uh, hour plus, you're good. You're pushing an hour. I I want to say I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. You have really put in the work, and you show people that when you work hard and you don't stop, this is what happens. There is success that happens, and I so appreciate you as a friend and a mentor. And uh, no, I can't say lover because that should have happened 25 years ago. So a friend. 25. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I love about Julie, because she don't care when we talk like this. Julie Not at don't. all. When I tell you she okay. don't give a damn, she like. Before I go, I want to I want you to tell this last story because it's so heartwarming. And we talk about you all the time. Y'all celebrated your anniversary, which was 20, yeah. th 13 years, right? 18 years. 18 um, years. Five days And ago. David. David called all the women in his life and he said, do, do you have a designer bag that you can give me? Why, David? Yes, I have designer bags. Okay, Julie <laughs> wants a Louis Vuitton bag. Do you have a Louis Vuitton bag you can give me so I can give to Julie? And I said, David, why would I give you a used Louis Vuitton bag for you to give your wife? Just go out and buy her one. Do you know how much they cost? 
I said, David, it's your anniversary. Yes, I. What do you? No, it was, her, it was her she, birthday. It was it, it was, was her fiftieth birthday. birthday. And I called Kim, and she said, "Yeah, David called me with that bullshit. <laughs> Asked if I had a designer back. <laughs> we talked about you so bad." And I said, "Did you? Are you gonna give him a bag?" She said, oh. "Hell no, nah, I ain't gonna give him no bag." But can I tell you <laughs> what did you do for Julie's fiftieth birthday? Okay, once again, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is David A. Arnold, or you go on my Instagram, you can see it. I what I did was I did I the real first. Let me just defend why I asked for the bag. Okay, <laughs> first of all, you and you and Kim was doing, I think, threesomes with Tom Joyner, and he brought $500 million mm -hmm. worth of Louis Vuitton. That's because the story. The, yep. the, the, the amount of Louis Vuitton that Tom Joyner came out with for Sherry and Kim, I was like, there's no yes. way sexual favors wasn't involved. In all of this. <laughs> it's too much. Thank so you, I was David. like, they got to have, they got to have a bag or two laying on the ground. You can't use all this. That was the first reason I asked. The second reason I asked is because I had previously bought my wife three Louis Vuittons and she has returned all of them because she's like, we, I don't need this. We could put this money in the girl's car. Like my wife is very, Julie is not materialistic. Julie is very practical in her mind. So I didn't want to buy another one and return it again. So I'm like, if I'm gonna get her some, I'm gonna get one of these bags that I know Kim or uh, Sherry got laying in their closet on the floor in the box, cause they got 40 of them. So I, that was my thought. None of that worked out. So what I did was during COVID, it was in the middle, it was in November. It was Julia's 50th birthday. And I went and I rented a house in Malibu. I had two couples that we, that live on the East coast that we rarely see. Everybody was locked down. So we hadn't seen anybody had them flown out, tested. So we all could create this little bubble that we were all in, in this house. And we celebrated. I got a, I got a celebrity chef that Boris and Nicole Kojo told me about, um, I bought her a few, uh, designer bags. I bought her, uh, a, a ring. I bought her a ring with her birthstone surrounded by a whole bunch of diamonds. And I bought her a brand new closet of clothes. Like I had one bedroom that was just filled with clothes and shoes and mannequins with outfits on them. And all. I just put all this together and she had no idea. She thought we were going to dinner. And so when she walked in this house and the friends, she just lost it. And it was a great time. And I recorded, I had my boy Hashem, bring a video camera and record all of it. And it was incredible. And yeah, it, it, it was, I will say it, it was good that y'all didn't let me, that y'all pushed me out to, you know, to try cause I did better. And I came up with that idea and it was good. And I think that bought me another two years. So <laughs> no, I think it bought me about another 18 months. So. I, I think it bought you a lot. <laughs> it's time to do something and else. I'm sure. This is why women love you because you're so, it, uh, underneath that aggressive, uh, you know, surly demeanor you have a lot is a man with the heart <laughs> of gold and is a man who loves hard. And that is why we love you, David Arnold. And I'm so excited and so glad that you came on. And hopefully when your show gets picked up, I can send my headshot and resume and there's a role on there <laughs> as Rihanna's grandmother. <laughs> I would I love like, it would who be was nothing that lady I would on, love uh, more Fred Sanford she always came in with you you old fish eye fool <laughs> Esther <laughs> Esther <laughs> let me be that, that sister-in-law let me be that sister-in-law that you just don't like <laughs> I love it oh my well, gosh whatever. that would be so great just wishing you all the best, David, and thank you so much. And we're going to have, I, I want you to mention it, even though we're going to have the Chiron up. How do people reach you on social media? Um, uh, you can get me on Instagram at the David A. Arnold, or you could just put in David A. Arnold and all things David A. Arnold will pop up. My website, my tour information, the stuff the that I'm doing, uh, it's all, all there. the nasty pictures that yes. you ain't got no. <laughs> I know you got some. I know you got some shirtless somewhere. I'm, oh, they oh, they, why are you bullshitting? They coming. You can you best believe they coming. One more David time. A. I'm gonna give Arnold. it to them one more time. I love you so much. Thank you. 
I love you too, Sherry. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks for having me. And thank y'all. Everybody, y'all can go to buyjack.com slash two funny mamas if you want to order any of our merchandise. And we're going to see if we can get a caffeinated stroke t shirt on mm. our website from David. We're going to give him some, give him part of the profits. We're trying to connect with every comic. And uh, please tell your family and friends to subscribe to Two Funny Mamas on YouTube and all of your podcast platforms because we're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers. We got 47,000 subscribers. We're trying to reach 100 grand by the end of December. So please tell family and friends to subscribe. And we just say God bless y'all. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Real quick, before we go, yeah. yesterday, as we air on Thursday, was July 21st, which is? Kim's the year tell everybody go to instagram wish kim a happy birthday it's kim's birthday and what is kim's cash app damn it hold on Uh, -uh. i'm not gonna leave without y'all cash app and my girl stop it please don't even don't even trip we if y'all want to this is my girlfriend david don't go nowhere hold on one second because we got it we i'm got glad it. i'm about to i'm about we to gonna stay uh... Kim Whitley a cash app and I'm gonna tell you what her name is on cash app uh let me see if I send put this <laughs> amount in damn it I hope okay Kim, she got two of them which is her her it's Kim Whitley damn it there's a ton of Kim Whitley's we'll but it's the first up. one it's it's uh we'll put it up we'll put her cash app up but you can you can cash app any birthday love that you wish to Kim. okay shit three hundred dollars just went through I was trying to do a test and $300 just went through the camera. He was trying to send, he was trying to, why wouldn't you do a test with a number one? Because I got these nails and it hit the zero. Oh. So I was like, oh no, no, I'm just test it. Uh, they have forgiven me my money back. It ain't a birthday yet. I'll do it on a birthday. Just, I'm going to get her some candles. I'm going to get her some candles what I was going to get her. So anyway, we're going to put her cash app up. It's going to be Kim's birthday. So don't forget to go to Instagram. Wish our girl a happy birthday. And we love you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.